Good afternoon, Money.net Live. I'm excited about this one too. Listen, I've got a very good one today. A lot of you out there are going to love this one because we're talking about things that are hot on the plate right now. That is NFTs, non-fungible tokens. And today, of course, if you don't know who he is, we've got DC Hondo, Hondo, Howard Greenberg. Howard Greenberg, you wear a lot of hats, brother. Um, you are an educator for cryptocurrency at Prosper Trading Academy. Love that. Love those guys over there. And you are also the president of American Blockchain and Cryptocurrency Association. So, whoa, uh, what else do you do? Oh, wait. Yes, that's right. You're Mr. NFT. So I'm going to get right to it, uh, Howard. How are you today, man? Doing fantastic, Big Beat. How are you doing, my friend? I'm good. So let's talk about it. Um, you you are literally Mr. NFT. I see all the time on uh, all the different YouTube channels, and everybody thinks they they are the NFT gods. You really are. You're pretty much writing a book on it. So let's talk about it. Um, what's hot in NFT right now? Uh, a lot of stuff going on. Obviously, everything with ApeCoin really big right now. Metaverse sale tomorrow going on there. Uh, Coinbase launched their new NFT platform. Hasn't gone very well for them. Saw the first uh, hit piece come out yesterday on there showing their volume, terrible volume, 73 Ethereum and trading volume, um, you know, about $217,000. At the same time, OpenSea did about $808 million in sales. Ooh. So Coinbase, not anybody owning coin thinking that was going to move the needle, does not look like it yet. Hearing a lot of negative feedback about their social media concept that they put in there, um, you know, where people are just blasting NFTs as someone's trying to sell them. So a lot of people pulling their sales directly off the site already. That's definitely big. Uh, and then sporting. This week has been the week. Uh, I mean, I know it's NFL draft, which is always exciting unless you're me, a Patriots fan, and you pick your division two all offensive lineman of the year um, every year in the first round. But, you know, NFL, uh, PGA golf, mm. soccer, uh, all moving big. into. All the right. NFL. Well, you've got the ability to share your screen. Let's get right to it, man. Let's show us what you got cooking here. Absolutely. And are you buying anything? Well, Yes and no. I, I am involved in a few things that I'm buying. Uh, I am not part of ApeCoin world here uh, <laughs> that I am showing on the screen, um, but I do have to bring it up. I mean, without okay. a doubt, on fire. If you look at ApeCoin's chart here, you can see they've gone on almost six and a half billion, billion dollar market cap. And Wait, let me, get, let me get this straight. That spinning little blue coin, that... <laughs> Ape coin price chart is worth $6.5 billion. Am I in the wrong business? Yeah, well, you know, you 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 should be a board ape owner at this point. I'm a little <laughs> haven't taken those earnings uh, from the crypto market and reinvested them. But it is insane. And the other part that's insane is seven and a half billion dollars in trading volume yesterday. Yeah. So, you know, while I can't give you a good reason why that market caps that high um, outside of the hype. I can't argue with the trading volume uh, there at all. And again, like I said, the big news there pushing this up is tomorrow will be their metaverse sale. So their first okay. land. Um, the other thing I will say, though, that, that, that I does worry me about that is when we look at the top coins by market cap, this now makes ApeCoin the largest metaverse project. That all sounds good and dandy. They don't have a product yet. They have not launched their main net. They don't even have a test net yet. They have no land. They have no one building on it. So that's what worries me. Um, you know, more established companies like Sandbox, who just partnered just yesterday with Standard Chartered, uh, a huge European banking company, right? A huge bank. Yeah. And they're going to build out their bank and their metaverse uh, there on Main Street in, uh, in Sandbox. So, you know, that you got Decentraland again, that's where JP Morgan launched their virtual band, uh, right. bank. These guys have actual working, you know, metaverses out there, things happening on them. You and know, if you keep scrolling up, I think you see another coin called Shiba Inu, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> Try to go buy it quickly on you there. I know what you're <laughs> um, I can't put that fully in the metaverse yet. It's still okay. a mean. Um, they're trying to move in that direction. Um, and this is what I got to ask you then, you know, Steve, you've been very forward thinking um, on a lot of different things over the years since I've known you. 
you know, my problem with buying land, like at, you know, when you asked about eight coin and the reason I'm not buying any tomorrow is I have yet to figure out is one of these properties going to be worth more than others. And how do you figure that out? You know, these things are trading at such huge, you know, prices. And to me, metaverse, I mean, I have an Oculus, you have an Oculus, in fact, talking about something you got me into over the years, um, you know, is getting into, you know, augmented reality and virtual reality. And to me, I don't see where these things are separating themselves. And in the regular part of the crypto world, all we talk about right now is multi-chain, layer, layer zero, web three, the interconnection of all of this. If all right. these metaverses are going to be connected, why is one worth more than the other? And I think you're right. I mean, I think that's what I've always been saying lately is, okay, all these companies are building their own lands or their own metaverse uh, ecospheres, we should say. Uh, but I think that the real money is going to be in who creates the, shall we say, the gates to all these different places. If I'm in Decentraland and I'm at Sandbox and I want to go to the Shiba Inu, which place do I buy uh, buy a home in, right? But I think that's I think that's just like life in general, right? I mean, I I like living in Florida. You live in the D.C. area, right? That's where you like to live. I used to live up there, but I wanted to move around, so I didn't live in I don't live in D.C. anymore. I live in I live in Florida. So there's got to be a highway. There is I ninety five. There's got to be a highway in the metaverse too. I think, and I think whoever creates a, the good um, highway there is going to make the big money. But you're right. You got to figure out who has the better land, who has the better opportunity, who has lower taxes, who has a better DeFi situation, who's got a better governor, who's got a better, you know, team around them. And I think I think there's a lot of things you have to look at. But for me, when you're asking that question, I think Shiba Inu is doing it because they're trying to create a complete ecosystem and not just part part of an ecosystem. I can't argue with that to a point. Um, I, I do know that you are skewed towards Shiba, so. I do take that into <laughs> account, and you are, uh, you know, in disclosure, a holder. Sure, um, sure. A large you know. holder. I have over a billion coins, yes. <laughs> right. Um, and my thing is, I do think that Avalanche is looking at that already. I listened to the analyst call that they do quarterly now with Masari, um, sort of almost like a quarterly report. It's great if you have not looked at any of those Masari's um, data that they do. And they were talking about the bridge between all of these metaverses. And that is going to be the interoperability that they're trying to provide. Um, they were talking about how they have subnet capability and that could be an answer. So do you see one blockchain down the road maybe where all of these metaverses are sort of built out on and they're all on their own subnets and they're compatible and you can go back and forth through that. That's gonna be, you know, that's the trillion dollar question. And you're Obviously. right. And, and J.P. Morgan put, put a bank in Decentraland. Think about it. If you, I want to be able to walk into any land that I want and I have crypto, I have Bitcoin or Ethereum or, you know, I've got all of it. Right. And I and you know what? I'm into a new land now. I've got my my VR on my headset and I'm walking through the metaverses. Oh, I don't have I don't have euros today. So I need to go get some euros. I have dollars. So I got to find figure it out. Right. So I got Bitcoin. Now I got to put it into to, to manner. Right. I think they're also going to see banks like a JP Morgan. If they don't, they better get their gear um, that we can have exchanges and there's going to be money based on that. Right. And so you want to buy that piece of art on the wall and in your hot house hondo i go into your metaverse house and i want to buy that that board ape on your on your wall and you say well it's more than uh your one bitcoin I'm like okay i don't have any bitcoin anymore now i got this we take this yeah but you're gonna need this to take it i have lots of bitcoin by the way um but let's talk about that right i mean what is hot in the nft world right now what do, what are you putting up on your walls uh, I mean, for me, my biggest right now that I, I'm hot on, quite honestly, I got it on my screen here. I'll show you. Let's it's see it. I want to see it. Fun. This guy is awesome. An actual artist, a graffiti artist, worked with some of the biggest brands from Versace to others, has been in art, you know, been in the different um, galleries around the, the world, as you can see here from his website. Um, he just launched an NFT project that is now sold out. They sold out their mint or they closed their mint. Um, but he's doing some great stuff. So this is the one that I've been jumping in the most lately. Um, I love it. I love sort of the graffiti art to it. I'm a big yeah. fan of that. Um, you know, there's Beverly Hills one. I'm bidding right now on one with this Paris with the uh, Eiffel Tower in the background. And then the mm -hmm. other really cool thing that they're doing, um, besides the fact that you can actually get him to make a, um, a hand-drawn art piece of your 
work. Really? Um, also uh, does the ability to combine NFTs. So as you can see here, a crypto punk sitting in front of the background from Seek One. So they can go ahead and um, put your, like in this case, it was, I don't know, that's a creeps um, in front of his NFTs. And some of them look awesome. Look at this psychedelic. I like um, that. I wonder, so, could, they, could they put one for Big Beat uh, with the graffiti in the background? And his business development manager is a good friend. Um, All right. that, like the artwork, the difference, put having his background versus just a regular background on it. So that's one that I'm personally um, looking okay. a lot at. Um, you know, we talked to you and I a little bit before sporting NFT is really taken off. Okay. I have not had really good luck with Top Shots and others. Friends of ours like Charlie Moon that, you know, I mean, Charlie got one of those rare um lebron james sold it for like one of the fourth largest sales on nba top shops um so you know he's had really good luck but nfl with their draft they just started putting out some nfts that i think are interesting the ones that i find personally interesting as you know i love going to sporting events same as sure. you with your models. um being able to get an nft of my ticket awesome you know i'm one of those guys i draw i still have my mother always joked I was born, almost born on uh, the St. Louis Cardinals uh, Red Sox World Series in 1967. Unfortunately, I am that old. Um, but believe it or not, I was born a few days after and my parents actually went to the World Series. Uh, <laughs> and while well, she was extremely pre pregnant and I have a ticket from that, which is one of my most valued you know, possessions. But being able to have NFTs of my tickets, I think is fantastic. So we're seeing that. Major League Baseball, again, do you have a favorite moment that you saw? So maybe it was, you know, Jorge Soler hitting a home run in the World Series um, or something else, able to get that, again, as an NFT, I think is awesome. Something that, again, if you're a sports fan, you want to do, again, I might not be able to buy my own World Series ring, but I could probably afford at least an NFT of it. Um, so it gives me some ownership, some connection to my teams, PGA Tour jumping into now. The wait NFL. before you before you PGA Tour. I, if I might, uh, in 1967, I do believe that the St. Louis Cardinals did beat the Boston yeah. Red Sox in the World Series. <laughs> I was yeah. not going to let you get away with that one. We made up for that a few years ago, didn't we? <laughs> you did. <laughs> but yeah, um, so those are some of the things. You know, soccer teams have really been big into it. Liverpool going back and offering some of their greatest. Um, players as a drop. So, you know, you're seeing it across the board. In fact, I saw some figures that just blew me away. Uh, it's estimated that we're going to see over $20 billion in sports NFT, excuse me, $2 billion in mm -hmm. NFT sales this year. And that came from Deloitte. Deloitte put out a report said about 5 million sports fans will get NFTs in 2022. Wait, um, wait, 5 million sports fans will be owning an NFT in the next how many years? Wow. Deloitte. Again, not a, not a figure from me, but directly from Deloitte. I mean, CoinGecko just did announce their report, the site that I was just showing. Um, and they have estimated that in the next two years, you're going to see $800 billion in NFT sales. Um, and they did a survey of about a thousand respondents and 72% of them own one NFT and 50% more said they're going to add this year. So, you know, again, so this is a grow. This, this market's growing faster than the actual crypto market then. Yeah. If you ask me the two different, you know, the two things I'm seeing the most of, I was interesting. I saw Sam Bankman free talking about it yesterday. Um, you know, DeFi, we're now seeing these high frequency trading companies like Alameda that are spending more time chasing yield than actually trading. They're finding more. He, he estimated that most of the big funds, the folks like Skybridge out there and Three Arrows, uh, Tiger Global, you know, the huge, huge high frequency trading company hedge fund, crypto hedge funds are making more money in 2022 on yield farming than they are trading. And we're seeing that in the volume numbers. You're seeing the total value locked on all of these platforms skyrocketing and you're seeing trading volumes dwindle. OK, so I know if I buy a bar of gold, I can't eat a bar of gold. I can't do anything with it, but just hold it right. Um, and I can tell you that as, as, as almost as old as you, Howard, that I traded baseball cards when I was a kid. 
Uh, you know, is this baseball cards and beanie babies all over again? Or are we actually, is this, is this something that I'm going to, what am I going to do with these NFTs? I think I showed you on that seek one, you know, I personally have four of these frames on order. Um, okay. you're on, you can't even get them. Um, there, you know, there's a few different companies that do frames trying to get them. The backlog is somewhere around six months to a year just oh, to wow. get um, these digital frames out there. Our friend Aaron Schurz has one of those new TVs that become a, a picture frame. Uh, again, he could put his NFTs there. Oh, good. Um, okay. All right. That, that definitely is a big part of it. And then, you know, and then, you know, the other part of NFTs that we're really seeing start to take off that's a totally different part of it is NFTs in different use cases. Some of the okay. great things that I've seen talked about over the last couple of weeks. Uh, I pulled up here for you, Origin. I know you are a big watch guy. Origin just partnered with um, a secondhand watch company called Watchbox, where you buy luxury luxury watches on the mm. second hand. And they're going to create NFTs that prove ownership and authenticity of luxury watches. Uh, I've heard Kevin O'Leary talk about this a lot. I guess he's a very big watch guy. Um, and, you know, this is something that, that they really could use. Me as a big wine lover, as you know, being part of the lick industry for years. Again, we're seeing this in the provenance of like French Bordeaux wines in Burgundies, being able to get an NFT with your actual wine to prove ownership because they're it. There is a huge problem with counterfeiting in wine um, and wine. It's even big when it comes to for a long time, there was more champagne being sold in the U S than produced in France <laughs> because wow. people, yeah, people bottling stuff in Italy and saying that it was champagne. So that one, another one that I thought is really interesting. And I've spoken again, we talked about Aaron just joking a second ago, but as I, as those that don't know, Steve is very close with a lot of big chop rock, and country musicians, um, and I've met them through Steve. And, um, you know, ticket sales, being able to use NFT for ticketing is hugely advantaged for someone like Aaron or Mike Nash. They can do the tickets and not worry about resales because if it gets resold, they get a percentage of that resale. So now they're not as concerned about that secondary market. They're not clamping down on that secondary market. They're actually saying, hey, go ahead, <laughs> you know, go for it. If you want to sell it to somebody else, as long as I get my piece, um, that's pretty big. They raised $4 million uh, after party, which is one of the bigger companies in that uh, genre right now. So I do think that that is really big. You know, as they talked about, ticketing services take about 30% of the fees. Um, that fee should go to the creator, the artist. And that's what's going to happen. Um, so I've been pretty excited about seeing that. The other thing that's been talked about recently, I saw a few Medium posts that have me really interested. And I'll ask you about this. How about NFTs for subscriptions? As somebody oh. who for a subscription company. And what they talked about there is you turn the subscriptions into bearer assets. And it okay. flips the entire relationship. You know, you know, you know, the publisher and reader, it changes it. The publisher is now not holding a reader's account details, but it's the other way around. As a subscriber, you're just getting a private key that gives you access to that material. So I don't have to worry about if I subscribe with you know, a company and does my credit card data get stolen? Does my private information get stolen? As we move into this world so of- Are you saying things like National Geographic, um, you know, like pictures from around the world, uh, Playboy, that kind of thing? Any paywall that you have could be replaced with an NFT. Um, okay. And it flips the difference to, again, what they really talked about in this article was how hard it was to cancel a subscription with Wall Street Journal. Mm -hmm. um, you have to reach them. You have to reach them within certain hours. The person tried. They you know, listed how long they waited on the phone and couldn't get an actual person. Um, and this would change part of that you know, problem that we have also. Um, but to me, it was more thinking about the fact that now the difference is, is you basically give me a key that gives me the right to look at your data, to enter your paywall, to enter your subscription service. Um, and, you know, you're not holding all of my information that you probably don't need um, mm -hmm. or that I might not want you to have, <laughs> um, you know, and it, it sort of flips that whole thing on its side. So I do think that's pretty um you know, so I just saw some news coming in. Uh, Decrypt Media come in and says, if you want a Bored Ape NFT, it'll now cost you nearly 
four hundred thirty thousand dollars in Ethereum. Is that correct? Yeah, and that's just gone down. It's been even more uh, prices. <laughs> I'm almost getting bored of Bored Ape. Am I right or wrong here? What's going yeah, on with the Bored Ape? I personally, like I said, I am not very big and never really have been all that big. I mean, when I say that, I probably do have 50 profile picture ones. Um, but in general, I have not been a big profile pitch, picture guy. Um, you know, some of these, like Bored Apes, do provide a lot of different avenues for that. Yeah, you're looking at, let's see, where's activity? Recent, so I always look to see what recent sales have been as opposed to what they say they listed at. Yeah, Wait, about does that say 152 Ethereum for, for $430,000 was the last sale? 15 for minutes. a picture. Well, it's access again. I mean, Board Ape Yacht Club, remember, you get all the IP that goes with that. You know, I, I know you are not a big cannabis investor, but um, in the cannabis world, some of the biggest. Um, sales in Colorado and California right now where the biggest movers have been these different strains that are actually owned by Board Ape Yacht Club owners. And they use the Board Ape Yacht, um, you know, the Board Ape as their marketing tool. I see. So, the, so what actually, you're saying is that uh, NFTs now tied to other things like maybe uh, uh, access to parties, um, maybe physical things. Is what's really driving the price of, of uh, yeah, NFTs. Thing. So instead, if you're a small business and you, you know, just think about, you know, I think about it as like a food truck, you know, a food truck wants to really make a name for themselves. They buy a board API club. They're then able to put that on the side of their truck. They'll be able to, you know, put everything on their menus and okay. everything on that. It becomes your whole marketing. So it's campaign. an instant marketing uh, ploy for yeah. a lot of companies. All right. I see now. Okay. okay. Money companies pay on look for logos and branding. You know, you're already building it in. You already have a built-in, you know, people know what it is. People want to be involved in it. I mean, we just saw seven and a half billion dollars in trading volume on eight coin yesterday. You know, you can't argue with that. Um, you know, we've seen bears get released. Um, perfect example again is that Seek One. They've already done a bear partnership where they did their own bear and you got like discounted ability to buy that. They're okay. doing a right now a wine for the spring a rosé same thing you know um we've seen some of these that give you access to restaurants and to private dining events so yeah and board api club it does it gives you exclusive um connections to their discord to meetups to concerts uh and then again you know the ability to take that and re-monetize it the ip you know, behind it, the intellectual property behind it is a big. And so part. NFTs are not just pictures, too. They're also music, and other things. Is that correct? Absolutely. As you know, again, um, and what I love about music, Kings Leon did it, was the first to really do it. You know, they sold their album as an NFT, and that was just your regular $15 NFT, and it, you got access to the songs. And then they had ones with, you know, added on value things, value added packages. Uh, one of them was, you know, you could buy the NFT and it also gave you a front row seat to every one of their tours for the end of time. Um, now you get one ticket per NFT at one show per, you know, tour, but you get one in the front row. I mean, you're, I know, you, I happen to know that you like a, a certain singer that uh, likes tequila and sun and fun. Would you get a Jimmy Buffett NFT? Yes. Yeah. We, yes. I mean, you don't have to ask twice. Yes, I would probably yeah. would. So think about that concept of it. You know, that's where the next stage really comes in is when people take it and it isn't just a picture on the wall. Again, sporting team, St. Louis Cardinals gave you a World Series ring um, and it's an NFT. Wow, not that great. But now that gives you access to meet and greets. It gets you access to signed memorabilia. It gets you access maybe to pictures with the World Series trophies and things like that. And that, now, and that company is candy.com. Is that right? Yeah, Candy is is the is the Major League Baseball one. Uh, Tops does have a partnership, but they're more baseball card oriented. Yeah, uh, you know, Candy is where they're doing it. Tom Brady's uh, autograph is a big one there. His partnership with Steph Curry and all those folks is another one where you can get some of that. You know, and I think you're going to see more of that. Where it's you so, know, any other uh, NFTs that you like out there? I mean, those are the big ones right now. The other thing I'm really watching, I told you about today, is yeah. This, uh, again, another token moved into the top 100, top 55 here. This one's kind of interesting. You've heard of play to earn, right? Yeah. 
How about exercise to earn? What's that? I don't know what exercise is. Yeah, I mean, basically, you buy this NFT of a sneaker, you hook up your phone GPS to an app, and it tracks your walking, jogging, running. And in return for that, you actually get paid out. Okay, but how how physical money being made here? I mean, I'm walking. It's benefits me. It doesn't how's it benefit my pocketbook? Because you are rewarded for walking with their token GMT. Um, and GMT here is trading about three dollars and seventy nine cents a token. Uh, from my understanding, with the basic shoe, you can earn about seven of those a day. If you actually buy the you know the upgraded versions, you can earn more than that. But for some people, just earning $21, $25 a day for their general walking they're already doing, not a bad way to onboard people into the world of NFTs and crypto. And the market cap of Stepin is now sitting at? 2.25 billion. 2.25 billion to walk around and get paid. Yep. And they did 2.8 billion in trading volume yesterday. Howard, I, I, I think I'm in the wrong business, sir. Uh, listen, we've talked about NF- getting it. you joining my NFT group here that we're putting together some some interesting stuff. So, well, well, well let's let's go back to that. Let's, let's unpack that. Uh, you're starting an NFT group, is that right? Uh, yeah, sort of an NFT as a service company. So okay. we are looking to be able to provide people that are creators with the ability to launch an NFT. You know, it's overwhelming for some up and coming artists like Seek One to enter the market. So we're especially looking to. Uh, work in that genre first with up and coming artists, you know, providing the infrastructure, the ability to write the smart contract, the developers to write the smart contracts, uh, help you pick the right blockchain to launch on, help you run your discord channel, social media, all that stuff, um, which is a big part of the community, build up your community, um, help you with your partnerships with either OpenSea or Rarible or Nifty Gateway or, you know, the place you're going to mint and sell your NFTs from. Uh, looking at that, also looking at tying into the restaurant industry a lot with Metaverse. Mm-hmm. And um, I don't want to give away everything, but, you know, looking yeah. to sort of um, give the restaurant owners the ability to sell their goods in a Metaverse style, show out, show their, their private dining spaces for functions. But also, um, I am a big fan. I love that Prosper Trading Company, Trading Academy is huge with this. Also, they send me some lovely Chicago pizzas, Italian beefs and things like that from a company called Gold Belly. Well, again, Gold Belly takes 30% of those sales looking to put together a um, NFT version of that, crypto version of that, where people would be able to buy food from restaurants directly to be shipped overnight, but where the fees are one or 2%, not 20 or 30%. So I have a few exciting things going on there that we'll be able to talk more about over the upcoming months. Uh, We look forward to hearing from you and we'll look from the next time we talk to you. All right. Thanks a lot, Steve. All right, Hondo. Thank you very much, man.